Moser ES versus Moser KS. Both of these wheels are on the affordable end of Moser's line. Which one's right for you? In my last video, I reviewed the KS wheel. Now let's pick up where we left off, where I'm changing between the wheels while I'm having a drive. KS versus ES. Let's just get straight into that video while I'm still driving. Okay, here we go. Right, KS wheel off. Oh, you can see how sweaty this is. This is one big downside of these grips and my hands. So I'm gonna be getting a pair of gloves for the future because this is getting pretty grim at this stage. So ES wheel on, but now we've got no buttons mapped. So if I go to my options. So in terms of the driving experience, the problem with the Mosa R5 is it's got a limited amount of torque. So because it's five Newton meters, you really want to be using all of it or as much of it as you can at any point. And because of that, when they made the ES wheel, they made it very small. And switching back to the ES from the KS just then, it feels small to me. So I feel quite compressed in across my chest, which is shocking because it's only two centimeters shorter. 20 millimeters shorter, so or one inch for our American friends, I think, less. And you wouldn't think that that would make much of a difference. But as I was investigating this, and I was quite surprised at the difference, um, I did some calculations online, and I'll put some more information on the screen potentially to explain a little bit better maybe than what I am. But when you do the calculations based upon the torque at the motor, in the center, by increasing the diameter by two centimeters, so the, the difference from the radius is one centimeter, you actually increase the torque applied to the wheelbase by 15%. So my steering inputs are 15% more powerful um, using the KS wheel than they are using the ES wheel. So this is a size difference between them, and you can see it's literally a finger's width on each side. So there's hardly anything in it, and that's why I was so shocked that it can make such a difference to the amount of torque that you can feel. So that means that you do lose a fair bit of feeling as you switch, and it, you can definitely tell the difference as you switch back and forth that this feels slightly more powerful. And it's perfectly workable on the R5 for sure. You know, I've got no problems with the KS. I've been using it for a month and it, it feels great. But what I would say is if you get the KS wheel for the R5, you will end up upgrading to a stronger wheelbase at some point. And I don't think that's a bad thing. And it's great that on the KS wheel, they've included the universal hub adapter so that you can upgrade to any wheelbase and you don't have to worry but it's just something to bear in mind that if you think you're going to get the KS wheel and drive it with the R5 you won't get quite the same force feedback intensity as you currently do and that's really the deciding factor is if you feel like you could get away with 15% less power from the base Say for example, I run mine at 80% intensity in Assetto Corsa Competizione and 100 in Pit House. But if you were using it, say at 60% or 70%, you probably got that little bit of extra headroom in there um, that would allow you to use the KS wheel no problem. But for me, I'm right on the max with the, the R5 as it is, and it just doesn't feel quite strong enough for me. So that's why I've got a new wheelbase on the way and that's my main consideration. But in terms of the build quality, the feature set, how it feels to drive, the KS wheel is just superior in every way. Um, I quite wish I'd got it earlier actually because I didn't really register how much difference it would make. Both in terms of the actual driving, it has made me a tiny bit quicker, surprisingly. You can see I'm not quite meeting up with my times, but that might be because I'm talking too much. Um, I do feel that I'm slightly quicker with the KS wheel, but having the more tactile features, oh, in the grass, having the more tactile features in the shifters and the buttons specifically are very helpful. One area that I've always struggled with with the ES wheel is I hit the pit limiter button, but I'm never very confident in whether it's registered or things like that. And it's 
because I'm nervous Nelly when I go into the pit lanes for sure I'm always worrying about it but I'll, I'll come into the pits now and I'll show you because on the ES wheel I don't get any tactile feedback that the button has fully pressed and fully depressed um, that was one of the biggest sort of things that I noticed about the KS wheel it feels so much more um, consistent that's the word the KS wheel is just more consistent so every shift is more consistent and if I just hit the pit limiter there, limit well, there you go, see I didn't, and it didn't engage the pit limiter and that may have been because I came in just slightly above pace, oh no it's because it's not mapped, <laughs> okay it's mapped to box, okay I mapped it to the wrong button, let's try that again. So what I'll do is I'll go around again and I'll cut the video and I'll show you coming in again. Okay so coming up to the pits. Engaged fine. Watch your speed. I'm just talking nonsense. I'm just always worrying. So yeah, whilst these buttons are tactile enough and you can definitely feel when they are pressed, it is absolutely nothing compared to the feel of these buttons. The, the noise is one thing, but how it feels to your thumb is completely different. Whereas these are, they've, there's a lot of play in them in general, they rattle around and you're never quite sure at what point they engage. Um, that's actually working fine, no problems. This is just a whole nother level in terms of the tactile feel. However, saying that, the ES wheel is not a bad wheel, it's actually great. It served me so well over the past, tw past 18 months in fact and I didn't even clean, I think that tells you everything you need to know. So I cleaned the ES wheel before I started, and you can see the grips are already a bit grimy just from using it today. The ES wheel I didn't even clean, and I haven't cleaned it maybe even since I did my R5 video, maybe a year and a half ago, I don't know. I certainly haven't cleaned it regularly, and it literally looks perfect condition. There's a minor mark there, which actually is just dirt. Um, but yeah, I mean, overall, the ES wheel has served me extremely well. And I've got nothing but good things to say about it for the price. So this is 120 quid on its own, maybe. But for me, when I bought it as part of the bundle, I didn't even think about buying a different wheel option. And the reason for that is because I just really wanted one thing to get started. I didn't want to buy a quick release and a wheel and a hub and everything else that needed to be thought about because it's just too much when you're getting started. So for getting started, I think the ES wheel is absolutely superb. And my favorite thing about it has always been the shifters. So the feeling, the tactile nature and the feeling of these shifts is just so enjoyable and nice. And when I got the KS wheel, that has a dampened thud instead of the click shift. And at first I was a bit disappointed. I was like, oh, I'm not sure if that's as good. But as soon as you get used to this, it just feels so much more robust than this. So this feels like a toy because of this shorter diameter, because of how the buttons play and the fact that it's sort of controller-like, whereas this feels so much more sturdy and wider it's just an awful lot more enjoyable to use and as I say because I've got all the buttons now exactly how I want them and they're in exactly the perfect position whereas on here you kind of you can map a b x y and try and remember what they are things like that but I didn't end up using most of these buttons when I was racing because it isn't as obvious and I always ended up mapping them, not using them consistently, changing the mapping to something else. And that's why I just really love having these dials. They're just right there, ready to use. You don't have to consider anything else other than, right, I'm gonna to go TC5. Whereas when I had the, the traction control mapped on here, I had the traction control mapped for one direction and the ABS mapped for the other. Occasionally I would get confused as to which one was mapped to which or I would increase it or decrease it um, inconsistently because I, w 
I wasn't sure what I was on. So you can see there I'm on ABS 7 for some reason. Whereas on the dial, I can just switch to 1 and then it will just change automatically because you don't have to think about the relative offset. You just think, what number do I want it on? I want it on 2, OK. And that's why the feature set of the KS wheel really makes it worth the money to me personally maybe because I got it for free from Moza but even if I hadn't got it for free I would seriously be considering looking into a better wheel now that I could upgrade from the ES because I wouldn't go back to using the ES wheel now that I've used this other wheel and again I don't want you to think that the ES wheel isn't great for getting started it certainly is and honestly I don't think it would make you any faster to have any other wheel because you get used to what you get used to and once you're used to this wheel um, I'm sure that it would serve you really well. For me I'm going to stick to this wheel for GT racing but now I'm really considering getting a new round wheel for rally and, and drifting and that's just a whole other expense. The cool thing with the ES wheel is you've got the formula mod and the rally mod so you really could have three different wheels in one but once you're kind of spending that money is that the right way to go because you've still got this kind of button plate and the lower quality buttons for me i i wouldn't buy the es wheel now that i've played with this one for whatever that means to you so depending on your use case, if you've got anything other than the Moza R5 with an ES wheel, which I think is probably less common, then I would definitely consider getting the KS. If you've got a Moza R5 and ES and you're happy with it, I would say just don't mess with it because once you start looking around and once you start thinking, I'm gonna upgrade my wheel, if you would get the KS or something similar, you're going to end up with a new wheelbase pretty quickly after that. So if you've got the R5 and you've got the ES wheel and you're happy with it, just stick with what you've got. KS wheel. Let's get that on. Again, I'm pretty confident now with where everything is. I don't really think about it too much. It's because I haven't used the ES wheel for a little while that, and because obviously I didn't have my you're mapping clear. set Stay correctly. So I'm on ABS 9 for whatever reason from playing with the other wheel. So I can just switch on here. Oh god. Straight to 1. I think I actually go 4 given my exceptional abilities there. Um, and again, so I don't even have to look at what the traction control is on. I can just set it on here. Let's get it to 1. And as I say, I can immediately feel that the wheel base is less, has less strength to it. So as I turn into a corner, it's very easy for me to oversteer the car and that's because it just can't fight me for grip as well as it does on the ES wheel. Significantly less, in fact. So there you can see I'm going over the level of grip just because I can't feel the edge. And as I said, it's probably about 15% by the numbers. I think the weight of the wheel also impacts it, but the ES wheel is technically heavier than the KS wheel, which is interesting. So the ES wheel, I think, is 1,500 grams, whereas the KS wheel is only 1,200 grams. But I don't know how that weight is distributed and all the rest of it. So let's just say it's about 15% less force going into your hands as you take a corner. But the way that mostly will impact your driving is you do that so you oversteer because you can't feel when you're about to lose the grip and that's why for the r5 i really wouldn't recommend this as the best option i think if you get the ks i think if you get the es wheel with the, the formula mod you will end up a lot better off other sort of nice to have features are because you've got the joysticks you can um, turn head more easily you know you've got a lot more control you've got a few more different options so you, as you cycle the display for example get around this corner so you've got your joystick so it's kind of easier i'm not sure why this light strip hasn't been working actually 
I only just noticed that, so you'll have to look back in the review, see if it's been off the whole time. But this must just be something to do with the settings where I've been messing around, changing the wheels back and forth. But the light strip on this KS wheel is actually a lot nicer in my opinion than the ES. It looks cooler and you can set the custom colours for the button, for the lights if you want, depending on what percentage RPM you're at. So I think the overall package of the KS wheel is a lot nicer. Oh god. Okay, my driving's just gone to hell now, so I'll end the review here by switching back to the ES wheel. So things that I like most about the ES wheel is I love the metal front plate. I think that's really nice. I've enjoyed having this leverette style grip. I think that that's worked out great. Um, as I said earlier, it's really good quality that it hasn't had any noticeable degradation over the time that I've been using it. It's had so much sweat on it, it's unbelievable and it's still in pretty much perfect condition. I loved the shifters when I had the ES wheel. Compared to the KS, I don't love them as much, but they're still in real sort of Moser feature in my opinion that they've got that nice feeling to them. So that's probably the main highlights of the ES wheel. Other than that, I think everything on the KS is better. The light, the buttons, and the overall driving experience. But again, the coolest thing of all of this is the Moser QR system, which is such a great addition. I'm so glad that Moser went this way with a really standardized NRG QR because it really makes the whole ecosystem a joy to use. If you're thinking about whether you should buy an ES wheel because you're just getting into sim racing, make sure you check out my next video, which will be about the Camus C5, which I've just got into review. And I'm gonna do a head-to-head -head comparison between the C5 and the R5. So that's everything I've got to cover in this video. Hope you enjoyed it. As I said, Moser gifted me this steering wheel. My affiliate link is in the description below if you're interested in looking more into these wheels or if you wanna buy any other Moser products. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you racing.